Good evening. This is Pastor Jason here at Pleasant Home Baptist Church, Miller's Creek, North Carolina. And we want to come to you this evening with a word that God has given us. And I pray that we be an encouragement to you this evening, that we be a help to you in the Word of God. I've I've set up just a little bit different this evening as we're coming into Christmas. And I hope you enjoy that. Maybe be a little bit Christmassy, uh, if you will. Uh, we are right here at Christmas, a week away from really Christmas Eve and celebrating our Savior's birth. And that's what we want to look at tonight and some things that were uh, actually happened after <clears throat> after the birth. Uh, we want to look at a man tonight named Simeon over in the book of Luke chapter number two. We want to turn there, if you would please, over in the book of Luke chapter number two. We're going to look at actually about 15 verses that we like to read tonight. And you pray for us as we get started and again i hope you enjoy the the setting we've worked on this for a while and uh, i i just uh, just ask for your prayers tonight as we get started <clears throat> excuse me in the word of god as we think on christmas uh, it's easy would you not agree for you and i to get caught up in the lights and the and, and the decorations and the presents and the, and the eating, all the get-togethers that we'll have here, well, we may not have that many because of this pandemic. But for a normal Christmas, we get caught up in the lights and, and the, again, the decorations, the get-togethers, all these things. And it's so easy to get caught up in those, in those things. But let me ask you a question. I want to ask you a, a very simple question. What are you looking for this Christmas? Now, what are you looking for this Christmas? Well, I'm not sure what you're looking for. You may, be, you may go to church here. You may go somewhere else. So I'm not sure what each and every one of us is looking for. But I found something today that we, well, we're going to see here how many are turning against Christmas today and how our, how our nation, how our culture and our world today seems to be turning, seems to be turning anti Christmas and really folks all it is it's anti-Christ it is that spirit that is out there that spirit of anti-Christ that is in the world today that the Bible speaks of I want to read you something that I found and I thought this to be well it, it, a bit shocking I guess for our area but, excuse me but once you get away from here uh, my how culture really changes but listen i'm still talking about right here in the god blessed usa the united states of america right here just down the road here just a few hundred miles down in miami florida someone uh, wrote this down and I, I thought this was somewhat amazing it was somewhat surprising but then again i don't guess it should be as this uh, school district, I well, let me take that back. I don't know whether it's a school district or whether it was a single school in itself had decided to get rid of Christmas altogether. And certainly those songs in which we sing around Christmas, joy uh, to the world. Uh, I think that beautiful star of Bethlehem, those things that we grew up on, that you and I grew up on, and I, no doubt some of our schools are still honoring those things. But this, this school here down in Miami, Florida, it says at my, or at my son's school, they now hold the winter program. Speaking of Christmas in February, they're wanting to get plumb away from December the 25th of any mention or any talk or any thought of Christmas. And then it goes on here. They are singing increasingly non-memorable songs such as Winter Wonderland, Frosty the Snowman, and then also Susie Snowflake. Now that's kind of funny being down in Miami, is it not? But they're singing songs. This Susie Snowflake, Frosty the Snowman in Winter Wonderland. What a shame it is. Folks, listen, we're looking for gifts. Uh, we're looking for get-togethers. We're looking for everything except for what we need to be looking for. And we need to be looking and focusing on Jesus this Christmas. Would you not agree with that? Well, I hope that you would. I hope that you will. I want to preach today just a little while and bring you a message tonight. Something that God has laid upon our heart. Over in the book of Luke, chapter number 2 and verse number 25. I've called this looking for redemption. Looking for redemption, the very first 
Christmas. If you would please, verse number 25, and we're going to read about a man that was certainly looking for redemption. Verse 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now I want to remind you, I want to stop there for just a moment as the Lord has taken my mind back to this for a moment. This is the second time in a lot of things that we see in the Old Testament. Most everything is repeated again inside the New Testament. And it takes me back to Methuselah just for a moment. As it says, when he dies, it shall come. What is he talking about there? He's talking about the judgment of God. But not only that, folks, he's talking about the salvation of Noah and his family. That salvation would come, but that but that, that judgment would come. And, and you think about Methuselah. When he died, he, he saw rain before he died. And then I think here of Simeon. Simeon was promised of the Lord that you'll not, die, you'll not die until you see the Savior. But listen, I ask you another question. God may be waiting on you today. So I ask you, would you pay attention very closely? And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Verse 27, and he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took he him up in his arms, Simeon did, and blessed God and said, lost my place, verse 29, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles in the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, pay attention, Mary, listen to what I'm saying to you, Mary. That's what he's saying. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and, a sign for, and for a sign which shall be spoken against Israel, yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Verse 36, and there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of uh, uh, Phanuel of the tribe of Aser. She was of a great age and, li and lived and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple. In other words, she, she, she served the temple faithfully, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And they have performed all things according to the law of the Lord. They returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and went strong in the spirit, in spirit uh, filled, with, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Father, I pray that you'll help us now. Give us that that we need. Give us wisdom and knowledge and give us power, God, as we stand and preach your word. And God, as we finish up, or even now, God, may that convicting spirit fall upon our lives as Christians, God, to remember, God, not to get caught up in the things of in the things of Christmas, but the person of Christmas. God, help us with that. And Father, I pray if there's one that may listen to this message tonight, but God, may, maybe not tonight, but maybe days and weeks and months and even years, years on down the road, God, I pray that that convicting spirit of the Holy Spirit, God, would, would meet them where they are, save their life, change their soul, and certainly tonight change all our minds if need be and God get us focused on Jesus we ask all this in Christ's name amen and amen I got three things that I want you to notice tonight very quickly as we're going to preach tonight on looking for redemption number one I want us to see the person who arrived the person who arrived now we're talking about Christ here but I want you to notice how Simeon handled all of this I want you to notice in verse number 26 verse number 
uh, 26, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now he gives him two names here that I believe are very important that God has laid upon my heart. I want to give to you here just for a moment. He first of all, he calls him Lord. He calls him Lord. As I think on that word Lord just for a few moments in the Greek, it is curios. It is curios in the Greek. Now what does that mean uh, to you and I? Well notice here in Notice here as I have printed this off out of the Strong's Dictionary, it means this. It's, it means he to whom a person or thing belongs. Folks, can I say this evening, regardless of whether you and I are lost or whether we are saved, we belong to God. We, be, we belong to the creator of this world. It says, for he to whom a person or thing belongs. In other words, talking about a copyright, if you will, if, it, if we want to speak of it in our days and days and hours in which we live, a copyright. In other words, about which he has power of deciding. It means master. It means... <laughs> Excuse me, it means Lord also, the possessor and disposer of a thing. The, the possessor and disposer of a thing. Let me ask you a question. Do you possess or are you disposing this evening? And I'm talking about Christ. Are you possessing Christ in your heart? Are you trusting God and Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you disposing of that thing this evening? But it goes on here. It says the owner, one who has control of that person, the master, uh, if you will. And I think just for a moment, listen, as I think on this and, and as I was putting this together this evening, I thought about Michelle and I and being married. You know, when God saved me, he set a seal about me and sealed me to the day of redemption. And can I say this? I'm not going to go nowhere till God's done with me. Amen. God's got his hand upon me. He's got his spirit upon me. And I thank God for that but I think of Michelle also and I think about this wedding ring in which I wear folks listen to me it, it reminds me each and every day of course I don't have to have the wedding ring to know that uh, but it reminds me each and every day that I belong to someone folks listen I've got the spirit that lives inside of me that reminds me daily day after day after day that I belong to someone but it goes on here it means is a title of honor expressive or respect and reverence with which servants greet their master. Listen, especially for those that are saved. So Simeon here, he identifies him, first of all, uh, number one, he identifies him as Lord, but second of all, he also identifies, identifies him as Christ. Notice here in verse number 26, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That word, that word Christ there in the Greek means Christos, or in other words, it actually, the, 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 mo, the, the meaning of Christos is anointed one. It is the anointed one, the one that's been anointed by God. And as I think of those things just for a moment, what exactly has Christ been anointed to? Number one, he's been anointed uh, by the Spirit of God as in his life. As I think back over the life of Christ and all that he did, the anointing that he had upon his life, he did things that no other man has ever done. He did things that angels has never done, that's never been done on this world front before Christ had come and since he has left but I think about as he raised the dead folks listen to me a lot of men has tried it but they have tried unsuccessfully I believe that once that soul has left that body there is no return the Bible said is appointed unto man wants to die and after that the judgment but not only did he raise the dead he healed the sick he healed those that are sick and, and the diseases and the things as such as that, folks, can I say this evening, listen, if you're sick, if you've got a terminal illness or, 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 or maybe the doctor is looking, you don't really know what's going on, don't give up hope. I know in this world in which you and I live, it's easy to give up hope, but don't give up hope. There is one that I put my hope in that you can certainly put your hope, your trust, and your soul in today. His name is Jesus, and he'll give you something to hope for. But don't give up hope. And then also, I think as he was, has the Spirit, 
Spirit of God. He was anointed with the Spirit of God. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. But folks, he is stirring, continues to stir, has stirred, and will stir every generation that's ever, ever walked the face of this earth. Would you not agree to that? I want to say this. He's loved by many today, or I should say he's loved by few today, but he is hated by many. Would you not agree to that? Just as that school system that we spoke of there just a moment ago, they're trying to eliminate Christ out of Christmas, our society today. We've kicked him out of the school or government. We kicked him out of the schoolhouse. We wonder why our children act the way they do. But listen, what have we done? Uh, we've told him to get out. God will handle this on our own. We've got this. You just move right along, but you keep our hands off of our lives. You let us do things the way we want to do it. Well, friend, you can do that today. That is possible uh, to do that, but there is consequences for our decisions. Would you not agree? Not only was Christ anointed with the Spirit of God, but he was also anointed with the sorrow of man anointed with the sorrow of man as i think on that here just for a moment as i think on christ's sorrow that he was anointed with he has a way of identifying uh, with you and i today would you not agree i'm glad as i think on that this morning you know or this evening here at the church, I can remember growing up with my mom and dad and something would get to hurting me or something would get to bothering me. I could go to mama or I could go to daddy and I'd say this hurts and that hurts. And folks, listen to me. It's something when you can tell somebody something that they can identify with. They understand your pain. They understand your sorrow. As I think here just for a moment, what all he was anointed with, I believe that he, we can identify with Christ in our troubles. Would you not agree? I'm speaking to those that have troubles today maybe with your finances can I say this you just keep on keeping on you keep on paying your tithes you keep on uh, helping missions you stay faithful to God and I assure you listen this may be a test by many it may be uh, it may be a, a judgment by some I don't know I don't know what God has in mind for you but folks listen to me you just keep on keeping on whatever it may be helps on the way would you not agree and then I think of marriage just for a moment listen I want to say this Christ was never married now don't get me wrong but I can say and I'm, I'm sure that I would be right to say that Joseph and Mary didn't get along maybe every now and then maybe they had a little argument every now and then I believe they did they was human and as I see as I see Christ as he grew up he witnessed that he saw those things that things were not perfect things were not easy sometimes in a marriage and, and sometimes they're just simply not but folks you just keep on keeping on can I say listen you made a vow uh, when you got married so Christ can identify with you I believe in marriage so you just keep on keeping on keep on trusting God God will heal that marriage and then I not only think of troubles but then I think of our weaknesses as well listen folks it's easier to, it's easy to follow today we live in a day and hour in which it's hard to lead I want to say that because uh, I know that as a pastor and, and, and as church now for 20 years in the ministry it is very hard to lead especially in the days and hours in which we live now, I want to say this I, don't, I didn't see a lot of weaknesses in Christ's life. Matter of fact, I didn't see none. But I want to say this. I see that, how he can identify through that, how he the government of that, that he submitted to authority, not but through weakness, but through obedience. Folks, listen, just keep on being obedient. The church, you and I, the church, we need to be the head and not the tail. We need to be setting the example uh, for all men in the days and hours in which we live. And then I think just for a few moments, I think he can identify through depression as well as I think as he was in that garden of Gethsemane just for a moment. He said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me and I'm sure they're just there for just a little while he he had experienced a sorrow and depression uh, like like he had never experienced before and then I think uh, about us today as depression comes in death as we lose loved ones and those have went on to to be with the Lord those that have died out I think depression a lot of times sets in in people's lives we I believe we would all agree that we've seen that and then I think about children as well this morning or this evening I think about children 
that have set in depression in their parents' lives. Maybe they've got caught up in the world. Maybe the things in the world, maybe alcohol or drugs, and, and maybe a family that has that has served God faithfully, and they just don't understand why it is their child won't come to church, why it is their child has got caught up in in in, in, in the things of the world, maybe homosexuality, maybe maybe drugs, or, or uh, maybe multiple, multiple marriages. I don't know, but listen, you just keep on keeping on. You keep on serving God. You quit looking around and you start looking up. You keep praying and God will meet those needs. Can I say again, help is on the way. You just keep on praying. But then listen, I think also of troubles. I think of weakness. I think of depression. I think of sickness as well. Now listen, now the Bible never records Jesus getting sick. All right. The Bible never records Jesus getting sick. Now, he was in the human body. I imagine growing up, I imagine he got a cold or two. He might have got a toothache or two. I don't know. I don't know. But listen, I can say this. He had friends that got sick. He saw it. He witnessed it. So he can identify with us. Each and every need, folks, that you have today, Christ can identify with. And I'm glad, listen, as we're thinking on this thought just for a moment, as we think on this, this thought, the person who arrived, and identifying with him, folks, whatever our need is, we can take it to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful to know, listen, that we got a Savior that we can identify with, that he's walked this earth, he's lived this life, and he knows what we go through. I praise the Lord for that today. But listen, not only, not only will we see here the person who arrived, but also I want to notice the praise we should award. The praise that we should award. We should award. Verse number 28 and 29. Notice here. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Now jump over to verse number 38 very quickly. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Folks, listen to me. There is some praise that you and I need to have for the Lord Jesus Christ. As Christmas comes around, there needs to be some praise. But I want you to notice the praise we should award. I want you to notice verse in verse number 28. First of all, our praise should be public. Would you not agree to that? God didn't call us to a private salvation. God didn't hire us into the secret service, but he hired us to be a public servant, a public ambassador of him. And when we come in, we need to praise him publicly. Notice here in verse number 28. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, and I want you to notice here, where Simeon at? Simeon's in the temple. Simeon is there in the temple as they brought that baby Jesus in. And no doubt there was many that was looking to Simeon. No doubt they knew. Now, no doubt some of them said, well, there's that old fool that's been talking about this forever. Well, he, he finally made it. Is this him? I'm sure there was many, many doubters in there. But folks, listen to me. I'm sure there was many shouters that was in there. Listen, as we think on, think on this, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Listen, our praise should be public. Listen, we ought to say amen when we come into the house of God. Would you not agree? We ought to say amen. We ought to raise our hands. We ought to sing. We ought to shout. All those things we ought to testify. Can I say this evening that he's worthy of all that we can offer him today? Would you not agree to that? But listen, we need to get excited just for a moment as I think about Easter. You know, listen, the Easter is the resurrection. But it's amazing how much time and how much excitement goes around Christmas and around the birth. Listen, we need to get excited. Come Easter, amen. Would you not agree? We need to make just as big a deal, but we need to make it just as public as we do Christmas. I tell you what, I believe it'd make a difference. Would you not agree? Uh, I believe you would. Not only, listen, our praise should be public, but also our praise should be personal. Notice here in verse number 29. Notice who Simeon is speaking to, Lord. Now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Did he say that publicly? I don't really know. But I can say this. He said it personally. Folks, listen to me. They just sometimes we're going to come in and we ain't going to know what to say. But listen, we need to have some personal time every day. We need to, to, need to have some personal praise every day for the Lord. We need to have some personal time. And can I say this? When we come back to church, you know the most unused place in the church 
is the most important. Hmm? The most unused place in the church is the most important. And that's the altar. You know what the altar is for? It's for personal praise. It's for personal praise. Praise. Not only are we we need to have some public praise, we need to have some personal praise, but my friend, we need to have some powerful praise. I want you to notice here in verse number thirty-eight. And she coming in that in, in that in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. And notice here, and spake of him. That word spake there is the same word that is used for Christ as he as he spoke his parables, as he spoke his or preached his messages to the lost of that day. Now listen, with, with all that being said said i believe there was some power in this woman's word that day folks listen to me we need the power in our churches today we need the power of god to be being displayed not only saw and felt but folks we need the power of god in our in our churches today we need the reverence and respect that we need we need to have that we need to come in here each and every sunday especially after the church gets back in and or every sunday no matter where we are we need to have the reverence and the respect we need to come prayed up we need to come with the expectation on our heart would you not agree to that folks listen to me we need to come expecting the blessings and the power of god to be on demonstration for every service but folks we live in a day and hour that we need the power of god and folks if you've not got anything to pray for i want you to pray for that now for pleasant home baptist church i want you to pray for it for your pastor that the power of god would rest upon us each and every time that we stand and each and every time that pleasant home doors open that the power of god would be on display i believe we'd all agree to that would you not finally in, in, in number three finally Let's see the power we must acknowledge. Now we sing the praise we should award. That is to Christ. But finally, I want to see the power we must acknowledge. Look over in verse number 34, would you please? And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold. Now what he was about to say to Mary, I'm sure call her, call her off guard. I'm not really sure how knowledgeable Mary was in the things that she understood. I'm not sure she clearly understood everything. That's that's not to, uh, that's not even said. But I want you to notice some things here. Matter of fact, you can go back that on several different occasions that you'll find that Mary and Joseph Joseph was marvelled at the things that they saw and which they heard. But I want you to notice here in verse number 34, and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold. Mary, pay attention. What I'm about to say to you is very important. Not only was it very important to Mary, it is very important to you and I. Everything in the Word of God, would you not agree, is for you and I. It is for our benefit, our correction, our doctrine, and our reproof. So we don't need to ever look over anything as it was just spoken to one person. Folks, when we open the Word of God, it is spoken, it is written for you and I. Would you not agree? But I want you to notice here, behold, Mary, you pay attention, listen up. This child, notice here, is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. I want you to notice two things here. Actually, three, but two things to start off. Listen, Christ will be one of two things, and I'm about to close, to each of us. Now listen. Christ will be one of two things to every man. To every man. Number one. To many, he'll be a stumbling block. Notice in verse number 34. Behold, this child is set for the fall. To many, he's going to be a stumbling block. Number two, to a few, he'll be a stepping stone. Would you not agree with that? To many, he'll be a stumbling block at the day of judgment. But to a few, he'll be a stepping stone. Notice what he says. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. Not only he'll be a stumbling block to many, he'll be a stepping stone to a few. But to all, he is a signpost. But to all, he is a signpost. I want you to notice here in verse 34. The very end, it says, And for a sign 
which shall be spoken against. To many he'll be a stumbling block. To a few he'll be a stepping stone. But to all he will be a signpost. You know, folks, can I say this very quickly and I'll close. As I think on Christmas, we all need to realize that Christmas will be a testimony against all mankind. It will be. Christmas will be a testimony against all mankind. Every generation since 323 B.C. And even before that, let me take that back before that, people have celebrated the birth of our Savior. And folks, so Christmas is as old as Christ. But it will be a testimony against many. Against all, I should say. As we celebrate Christmas, folks, I ask you, this Christmas, who is it that you're celebrating? Are you celebrating the lights? Are you looking for the lights, the decorations? Are you looking for the get-togethers and the, and the turkeys and the banana pudding and the cranberry casserole? That's horrible, isn't it? But I think of all the things that people are looking for. But I ask you now, are you looking for redemption? Simeon was. Simeon says, Lord, don't let me die until I see salvation. Are you going to die today without seeing salvation? Or can you trust Christ now as your Lord and Savior? I wonder, could you do that? I pray that the Holy Spirit, the power of God has fell upon you. Holy Spirit has convicted you. If you're already saved, I hope you've been encouraged through the word tonight. If you're a member at this church, I hope you come back with, with, with one thing in mind, and that is come to the praise and, and see the power of God here at this church and to see us work and do and give and, and all that God wants us to be with missions and with fellowship with one with another. You pray for that here at this church. But I wonder some of you that may listen to this, you're looking for everything in Christmas except for Christ. I ask you now, would you turn to Him? Would you turn to Christ now? Ask Him to save you. Ask Him to come into your heart. Change your life. Give you a Christmas to remember. A December the 25th to remember. Or Well, today's the 16th. Give you a new life and a new body, a new creature. Make you a new man. I wonder, could you say that now? Say, Lord, save me. God, I'm not looking for a sign, and there's nothing I can bring besides a broken life. But God, I bring that by faith. I'm not looking for a sign or a miracle. But God, I'm asking you now to come into my heart and life and save me. Lord, I'll turn from my sin through the help of you. And I'll trust you as Lord and Savior. If you do that, he'll save you. Could you pray a prayer or something similar to that today? And God will save you. Do it by faith. All the faith that you have, God said that each and every man is all dealt a measure of faith, and that's enough faith to save us. So you call on the Lord now by faith, just asking him to come into your heart and life and save you. Folks, I love you. I hope you've enjoyed the message this evening as we get into this Christmas season. Let's don't get caught up in the lights and, and all the things of Christmas. Now it's pretty. It's it's nice. Yeah, those things there's nothing wrong with that. But let's look to Christ for Christmas. I want to be Simeon. I don't want to leave this earth till I see Jesus coming in the clouds. Till I meet him in the air. I don't want to leave this world. I may leave it by the grave. I'd rather meet him in the air. Well, I am going to meet him in the air. But I'd rather not go by the grave. Can you say that? I want to see Jesus. 
See me and just want to see Jesus. Folks, I love the Lord. I thank God he saved me, and I look forward one day to seeing him. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, I pray, God, for the people that's heard this message in the years that it's fell upon. God, I pray for your help in their life. God, the broken hearts, maybe, of, of uh, broken homes and marriages, struggling finances and things. God, help us to realize, God, it's not the end. For many, it'll be only the beginning. God, you come in and you heal these lives, restore these marriages. Uh, God, help them with those finances, all those things. God, you can identify with us through those things. And, and God, I pray, help us to cast all our cares upon you. God, help us to do that. Now, Father, I pray for those that may have repented, repented today, trusted in you as their Lord and Savior. Now, God, help them. Help them to realize, God, that, they're there to, that they've been saved to serve. And God, I pray they'll do it. They've been saved to turn from their sin. They have been saved from a place called hell. God, help them realize that. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, I pray that you'll bless it. I know it will not turn me void, but it will do, God, what it set out to do. Lord, we love you. We thank you for saving us. We ask it on Jesus' name. For his sake, we do pray and ask. Amen and amen. God bless you.